All right, now that we've talked about all the different factoring techniques, what we're gonna do in this section is actually just take some time to practice. But practice with all the different factorings jumbled up. So that's what's kind of hard. Um, so how do you actually approach a factoring problem? Well, hopefully um, you've been following the seven steps. I feel like if you can follow those seven steps, it'll give you a good guide of what type of factoring that problem is going to be, as long as you make sure you follow those steps. So do you remember the steps? See if you can write them down before I show them. <laughs> All right, in order. Make sure that it's in order from highest to lowest, if you can tell. Look for a GCF first. Always, always, always take out a GCF if there is one. Then look at your problem to see if it's two terms, three terms, or four terms. If it's two terms, see if you can break it down into a difference of squares. Remember, it has to be a minus sign in between. And then you have to be able to break both parts up into uh, conjugate binomials. Remember, opposite signs. If it's not a difference of squares, maybe it's a sum or difference of cubes. Can you take each one of the terms and write it as a quantity cubed? And then use the formulas. Do you remember SOAP, same, opposite, always positive? Then it's your first term, your second term, your first term times itself, the two terms multiplied together, and then your last term times itself. Make sure you know both of those formulas so you can uh, factor with a sum or difference of cubes. Now, if it's three terms, it's either going to be a basic factor problem or it's going to be a bottoms up problem. Remember what multiplies to the last number that adds to the middle number. And if there's a number in front, you should be doing bottoms up, a number in front other than one. Remember, my friend doesn't read books. Make sure you follow all the steps so you don't stop uh, before you're supposed to. If it's four terms, remember that's a uh, factoring technique we called grouping, where you group the first two, you group the second two, you look for a GCF in each group, and then you should be able to GCF out one more time into a factored version. All right, what I suggest you do in this section is pause the video and work through these six problems first. Then come back and see if you got the same answer that I did, making sure that you're showing me all of your work and your answer looks exactly like mine. So pause the video for a second, do one through six, and then come back with me and we'll look at these six. All right, the first one, it's in order. I looked for a GCF and I noticed that I could take out an X that left me with an X squared minus 20 X plus 100. My uh, leftover uh, trinomial has three terms in it, so I'm gonna see if I can factor more with a basic factor. Numbers that multiply to 100 that add to negative 20, I got negative 10 and negative 10. This actually happens to be what we called a perfect square. Remember your two binomials were exactly the same? So you could write it like this, or you can write it as an X minus 10 squared. And then don't forget your X, your GCF out in the front. Either answer should be acceptable. All right, number two, it's in order. There is no GCF, there's no number or variable I can take out of all those terms. And I do notice right away that it's four terms, so this is probably a grouping one. So let's group the first two, and let's group the last two. Let's look for a GCF in each group. In that first group, it looks like I can take out a two and an X squared. In the last group, there doesn't look like there's a GCF, but if I have to take one out, remember we can take out a one if we need to. So that's what I did. I took out a two X squared, that left me with an X plus five, and then I took out a positive one, which left me with an X plus five, which is perfect, remember, because my leftovers should match, so then I can GCF the X plus five out again. So I GCF'd out the X plus five, and that left me with the two X squared plus one. That's the factored version of my original. All right, number three, it's in order. Is there a GCF? Yeah, it looks like I can take out a four, right? When I take out that four, you should have left over a two X squared plus one. Now I'm always gonna look to see if I can factor more. And I notice that there is no more GCF and there's two terms. But it's not a difference of squares because it's not a subtraction sign. And it's not a sum or difference of cubes because my exponent isn't divisible by three. So it doesn't look like I can factor it anymore. Now I'm not gonna say that this problem is prime because it is still factorable. I could just factor out a GCF and that's it. So that would be my final answer. All right, let's look at number four. Number four, is it in order? Well, this one's kind of hard to tell because this one has multiple variables. So let's hope that it's in order. Is there a GCF? It doesn't look like there's anything common in all of those terms. I do notice it has three terms in it, so I'm going to try to basic factor. 
And the only difference on this one is I have some extra variables in the back. We need to figure out what numbers multiply to 6, then when I add them together, I get 5. You're going to have an x in the front and a y in the back. So I got an x plus 2y and an x plus 3y. They multiply to 6, but add to 5. Don't forget your extra variable in the back there. All right, number 5. It's in order. Is there a GCF? Ooh, it looks like I can take 3 out of both of those terms. When I take out a 3, I have left over an x squared minus 9. Let's see if we can still factor. This binomial has two terms. It doesn't have a GCF, and it looks like it's a difference of squares, doesn't it? There's a subtraction sign in between, and I can break up the x squared and the 9. All right, so here we go. I have the 3 as my GCF, and then I can factor into an x minus 3 and an x plus 3 for my difference of squares. Hopefully you got the same thing I did. All right, number 6 is a little bit tricky. It's in order, and there's no GCF but I don't like this negative coefficient, the leading coefficient. So I, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to factor out a negative 1. That changes my signs to everything. Can I still factor that trinomial? Well, it looks like there is a number in front other than a 1, so I'm going to do bottoms up. Remember our steps for bottoms up is multiply, so I'm going to multiply the 10 times the 3. I'm going to factor. I factored it into m plus 6 and m minus 5. I'm going to go back and divide by whatever I multiplied by in the first place, so that's 10. I'm going to divide each term by 10. I'm going to reduce, and I'm going to bring my bottoms up. You should have left over a 5m plus 3 and a 2m minus 1. And then don't forget that negative 1 as your GCF. That's an important part of your answer. If that's missing, you don't have the correct answer, unfortunately. So hopefully your answers match mine for all of these problems. We're going to do a few more in the next video. So why don't you pause the video, look at uh, 7 through 11, and try those factoring problems, and then come back to the next video and see if you got the right answers.